imports over 50% of its crude petroleum. That's roughly 200 billion gallons of crude oil a year. 75% of that goes towards major transportation fuels such as diesel and jet fuel. Now, while we've known this for a while, why are we addressing this now? Well, there are several reasons. One is the increased concern regarding energy security. The United States, including developed countries, import most of their oil from foreign countries. Number two, the depletion of oil supplies in easily accessed areas has forced us to go to remote and environmentally sensitive locations for our oil and has allowed us to use technologies such as offshore oil drilling. Now, while these technologies have been a source of concern and controversy for a while, this was particularly highlighted following the BP oil spill. The third problem is the concerns regarding increased greenhouse gas emissions, particularly in urbanized areas. Now, this is a global problem and must therefore be addressed accordingly. Most importantly, however, is the projected energy consumption worldwide, as shown in this graph. This is primarily due to the fact that as developing countries become more industrialized, their energy demands are expected to boom. Now take that and add it to the already existing energy demands of countries such as the United States and Japan, and you have an unprecedented demand for energy worldwide. In light of the many concerns that Yasmin has identified, uh, much attention in recent years has shifted towards the development of a suitable alternative transportation fuel. We see the development of biofuels uh, developed from renewable biomass as a key innovative fuel that has the potential to solve each of the problems that Yasmin identified. With respect to the environment, uh, we see key improvements. Notably, biofuels burn more cleanly uh, than, than petroleum-based fuels, uh, reducing toxic vehicle emissions. Furthermore, as, cold, as biomass, which is harvested plant material, as it grows, it actually removes carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, thereby functioning as a carbon dioxide sequestration mechanism and completely eliminating uh, a, a lot of carbon dioxide that's currently in our atmosphere and reducing global warming. Secondly, uh, homeland production is a key issue, uh, particularly in this country, uh, given that we import over half of our oil. Uh, biofuel produced from renewable biomass can't address this problem, most notably because biomass can be grown anywhere there's a, a significant uh, capability of uh, agriculture on an industrial scale, especially in this country. <laughs> Furthermore, offshore drilling is definitely not a problem when we think about biofuels produced from renewable biomass, and, and these operations can be located uh, in areas that are not environmentally, uh, environmentally sensitive. So really only one key question remains. You saw the uh, exponentially increasing demand curve for energy. So can biofuels meet this rising energy demand? Is that possible? And if your biomass feedstock is algae, then we feel confident saying yes. That is notably due to the high productivity of this feedstock. Uh, algae actually exhibit a, a rate of oil synthesis up to 100 times that of other terrestrial crops, including corn and soybeans. Uh, and corn is actually what's been generating a lot of buzz in recent decades. Furthermore, algae does not require fertile land to grow. It can even grow in sewer systems and most likely your neighborhood ponds. It grows virtually everywhere. Algae is, act, is also not a uh, staple food crop for human consumption. Therefore, it does not compete with the food market as does corn and other feedstocks. And lastly, you just heard a presentation about water. And water is a key issue in this world, uh, and almost one in six uh, people uh, do not have access to fresh water. While well, algae can grow in saline and even wastewater, so this is not a concern. So now that Spencer has highlighted all the benefits of producing biofuel from algae, why aren't we seeing this technology being implemented at a scale large enough to meet the energy demands of the United States? There are several reasons. Any algae to biofuel venture involves three major steps. One is algae cultivation. Algae must be grown in order to increase its biomass and its oil content. This is followed by an oil extraction step in which the oils that have been accumulated in the algae cells are removed. Once the oils have been extracted, they must be converted into a usable biofuel such as a biodiesel or a green diesel. Direct combustion of extracted oil leads to engine choking. But there are problems associated with each one of these steps. The first, with algae cultivation, is the absence of a cost-effective method for large-scale cultivation. Conventional methods use photosynthesis, in which the algae is allowed to grow in the presence of carbon dioxide, light, and water. But the problem with photosynthesis is that A, it has very low oil contents, very low growth rates, and very low cell densities are achievable. This means in order to produce a certain target production rate, we're talking about massive volumes of algae culture. The problem with oil extraction is the absence of an energy efficient process. Conventional processes are so highly energy efficient, inefficient, that they deem the entire algae to biofuel venture economically infeasible. 
the problem with oil processing might be even bigger, and that's the lack of a chemical process to model the conversion of the extracted oils from algae into a usable biodiesel. In our project, we address each one of these problems, starting with algae cultivation. Instead of adopting a strictly photosynthetic approach to the cultivation of algae, we decided to supplement this step with a fermentative growth process in which the algae is then allowed to grow in the presence of oxygen and a, and a carbon-rich source such as glucose. We, however, decided to not use glucose as it's a fairly expensive feedstock and went ahead and used glycerol, which is a relatively cheap commodity chemical. As Spencer will talk about very soon, Glycerol happens to be a secondary product that is produced in the process of transesterification in which we convert the extracted oils into the usable biofuel, so we don't really have to pay for it. What's even better is that this glycerol can be used untreated. It can be used as crude glycerol, and studies have shown that it's a suitable substitute. This, this modification allowed us to optimize the usage of land for algae cultivation. Just to give you an idea, when we compared our process to a similar process that targeted the same production rate, they were looking at a land cost of $2.2 billion. Our land cost does not go above $130 million, including industrial fermentation tanks. Also, the use of glycerol instead of glucose allows us to avoid an additional $1 billion in operating costs. This would have deemed the process entirely economically infeasible. And now that Yasmin has talked about the cultivation process, I will go ahead and talk about the oil extraction process. As Yasmin mentioned before, one of the challenges to an algae to biodiesel venture is the absence of a cost-effective strategy for large-scale oil extraction. Um, conventional processes use uh, uh, multiple dewatering steps, distillation columns, which are all very highly energy intensive. And so several companies have been looking to decrease this cost. And one of these companies is Origin Oil with its development of the single step extraction process. Origin Oil claims that its process reduces the energy cost by over 80% by utilizing two new technologies, quantum fracturing and electromagnetic pulses to break down the algae cell wall. And as you can imagine, breaking the algae cell wall is important as to release the valuable oil contents inside. And so in this process, first, quantum fracturing weakens the algae cell wall through a combination of nano and, carbon, nano and uh, micro sized carbon dioxide bubbles, pressure pulses, and ultrasounds. And then the algae cells are sent to an electromagnetic pulse device where uh, an oscillation of an electromagnetic field causes the algae cells to uh, shrink and swell. And this constant shrinking and swelling causes the algae cell to eventually explode, leaving algae oil and uh, remaining cellular debris or biomass. And so after sending the oil to be processed into biofuels, what do we do with the remaining cellular debris? Um, oh, sorry, I'd also like to add that for the first time, we were able to cost and size our, uh, this process. And from our estimates, um, this process will be reduce, producing um, algae oil at around six cents per pound, uh, where compared to conventional processes that uh, <coughs> produce algae oil at around 56 cents per pound. And as I said earlier, uh, what do we do with the biomass? From our process, we are producing about 3.7 billion pounds of algae biomass per year. And while this seemed seem like a huge number at first, um, in 2004, the U.S. consumed about 240 billion pounds of animal feedstock. And so the next step is to look at pricing. And from our research, we found that algae biomass would most likely be cost at around 10 cents per pound. After considering uh, oil extraction, what do we do with that oil and how do we turn it into a valuable fuel? Uh, we thought about oil processing, which is the chemical process that is used to convert those oils uh, into a uh, fuel such as biodiesel. Uh, however, we, in addition to just thinking about our biofuel product, uh, we seized upon the opportunity to think about how to creatively manage our byproducts as well. And if you remember, uh, Yasmin identified glycerol as a key uh, algal uh, feedstock that we need during our cultivation. And we actually designed the oil processing scheme in such a manner that we would be producing this glycerol uh, byproduct and recycling it, as you can see here, to cultivation. And as chemical engineers, we constantly seek to optimize our process designs, uh, oftentimes by adding these recycle streams. And we, we see this, uh, this innovative development of a, of a recycle stream as a, a really key technology that separates us from our competitors. Uh, Yasmin also identified the absence of a chemical model uh, to kind of simulate this process. 
uh, and we went ahead and used Aspen software uh, to computerize uh, and simulate uh, oil processing. Some of our schematics are shown here. Uh, as you can see, they're quite complicated and involve a variety of uh, pieces of equipment and technology. So I'll spare you uh, the intricate details and skip ahead to highlight some of our results. When we performed a comprehensive literature search, uh, we noticed that there are some chemical simulations uh, that exist, but they all fail to meet the current U.S. standards for biodiesel purity. Uh, we set this as a key target for our simulation and sought to meet them. And as you can see, uh, in each of these uh, items, we actually uh, met or exceeded uh, the current requirement of just some of the ones that are listed here. Uh, this is actually a really significant result, and uh, our computer simulation is actually now being considered uh, by the National Alliance for Advanced Biofuels and Bioproducts, and we're really excited about this development. Once each of the uh, three modules have been explored, we decided to compile them together in a, in a detailed economic analysis. And you can imagine that for an alternative fuels project, an, econo an economic analysis is particularly important given that current consumers and producers of petroleum-based fuels are unlikely to switch their ways uh, until doing so is economically attractive. We first calculated a return on investment and uh, arrived at a figure of roughly 32%, which indicates that our process could be highly profitable and attract investors. However, if you uh, may recall that Daniel mentioned that our selling our algal biomass is a, a really generates a key uh, additional revenue. And uh, while we do believe that this uh, will be, uh, in fact, a key part of our process, we decided to examine in the worst case scenario, if we weren't able to sell it, uh, how would that affect our economics? And we still arrived at a return on investment of roughly 15%, indicating that our process would still be uh, comfortable. So we definitely feel uh, confident in saying that we'll be operating within these bounds, most likely around 30%. Uh, oftentimes, oil uh, processes are thought of in terms of the production cost or how much it costs to produce a single gallon of fuel. Uh, conventionally, it costs $2.50. By implementing uh, each of the innovations that we discussed today, we're able to lower this value and have arrived at a figure of roughly $1.92 per gallon, quite significant savings. We also thought about capital costs. And uh, a previous estimate for a project the same scope that we considered uh, estimated costs at roughly $3.2 billion. Uh, we have lowered this value to $1.2 billion, uh, a really significant savings of roughly 60%. And while over a billion dollars may seem like a high investment, uh, it's actually quite reasonable when the return on investment and high annual uh, revenues are considered. So now that we've completed our economic analysis, we really feel confident in issuing the strong recommendation uh, that developing and commercializing this algae to biofuel process is not only technological fe technologically feasible, but economically feasible as well. And now that we've developed our models, we hope to see them move out into the real world uh, and conduct pilot scale studies. Uh, and we truly feel that we've identified uh, solutions to each of the problems that Yasmin identified at the beginning of our presentation a low-cost uh, alternative uh, for algae, algae cultivation, an uh, energy-efficient model for oil extraction, and developing a chemical simulation for oil processing. And by doing so, we feel that we've taken a project uh, that was previously deemed uh, unfeasible and really brought it onto the map of what is feasible. Uh, we see algae being a significant solution that will help to uh, manage our energy crisis in the 21st century. We have so many people to thank, including our faculty, industrial consultants, and our peers. Thank you very much.